dollars. We knew it coming in, but boy, oh boy, just seeing it all happen is pretty amazing. We're glad to have you with us. I'm Bob Varsha, joined once again by Matt Stone from Motor Trend and Motor Trend Classic Magazine. Thanks to Mike Joy and Keith Martin from Sports Car Market Magazine for sitting in. They'll be back later. Steven Yante is down on the stage. Rick DeBrule's out back checking all of the cars out before they come to the stage. And he's picking out a few to preview for us right now on stage. The car billed as the last Shaker Hood Dodge Challenger built, a convertible from 1971, and we're approaching $100,000, Matt. How about that Shelby, huh? <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? My goodness. Well, I thought the roof was going to come off this place. That's a car that's going to sticker for around $45,000. I figured, oh, maybe five times sticker. How about 10 plus? Wow. And we are a long way from done. You heard our expert opinions earlier about what some of the other choice models coming up later on might go for. And we are talking serious seven figures. Steve, we do not have powertrain information on this car up in the booth, so could you give us a rundown of what is under that shaker hood? Yeah, sure, guys. This one here is a 71, it's a 383 Magnum, and it has the all-important N96 shaker hood. We see the, the fender tag right there, N96. It's also a two-tag car, I meaning it's got a lot of options. A little known fact is that 1971, the 383 was actually 400 cubic inches. Now we're picking up the pace a little bit. That one sold away at $102,000. Away it goes to a new owner. Interesting butterscotch color. 15, 20 years from now, 40, 50 years from now, like so many of these beauties have at Barrett Jackson. Now on the stage with bidding at $130,000, a 1970 Plymouth Cuda two-door hardtop. Keith Martin. This is a great car. It's has so heavily optioned that it took two fender tags from Plymouth to document all the options on this car. But not only is Bear Jacks about having great cars, it's about marketing those cars. The seller of this car has, pre has prepared a little tiny handout here. What they have is this piece that they give to people who are interested in the car so that they can put it in their pocket and be thinking about this car all the time. So it's one thing to have a great car. It's another thing to help the auction company get top dollar for it. It's all about salesmanship and marketing. Looks like we've got a phone bidder. See the auction staff looking over at the phone operator, the bidder's assistant. Although this is a car that sells itself, 446 pack, fully documented, great color combination. The only thing I could think of that would make it any more desirable were if it were a Hemi or a four-speed, but this is a plenty good piece the way it is. Sold it is at $135,000, and it went to the phone bidder. Well done. Now let's check out the next lot. It's up there. It's black, and it is one of 100 Corvettes in this year's catalog, and so many beauties, including, coming up later on, the oldest believed to be the oldest existing production Corvette ever. Body number three. We'll find out what that'll bring. Right now, here's a 66 Corvette 427, 425 convertible. We've seen several of these 427, 425 horse cars sell here at the sale last night. A black one that was in outstanding condition, brought a little over $200,000. This one's been up there about 15 seconds. It's already at $80,000. Let's see where it goes. But what I like about this car, especially, is it's what's called triple black. And what that means is that the body is black, the interior is black, and presumably the canvas top and the, the fiberglass hardtop here is black. Black is an incredibly sexy color. We've seen black Corvettes bring, bring big money, and this one is triple black. So the CRS tag. One of the Corvette enthusiast groups that can help you document these cars and learn about them if you're thinking about buying one. If I understand the seller's information correctly, this is just a three-owner car, and it was two owners until fairly recently, from its original date of sale in December of 1965. 
the other thing, no. the other thing that makes these cars bring big money is what's the size of the engine. This is a 427, 425 horsepower car, and that means that you've got some serious scoop. Now they did build a 435 horsepower car, but this is about as close as you get without going to that level. The car that sold last night uh, had a red interior, by the way, Keith. So. Uh, this one perhaps even one step sexier than that. Oh, I think that was a 435 horse car if I remember correctly, but we're in the same territory already hitting the $200,000 mark. Correct me, Matt, but NCRS is National Corvette Restorer Society? Correct. Bob. Sold that at even $200,000. And I believe that's at least the second, ac second acquisition by that couple right there. So they're going to have a collection. Yo, Bob, I'm down here on the stage, and it's, I've been doing this with speed for 10 years, and it's my first time down here. And I have to say what I'm struck by is the color of the cars when they come up here. From up in the booth, they look pretty, but from down here, a car like this Corvette, this 67 Corvette 427, 435 horse car, white hood and red stinger. This car makes such a powerful visual statement. Now I have a much better idea of why people fall in love with these cars when they cross the block and why they open their wallets and pay the big bucks. You just have it's instant infatuation when a car like this gets under the lights. Another numbers matching vet. Look at that bid. 170 and climbing. This car has just 34,000 original documented miles. Think about it. Nearly 40 years old and only 34,000 miles. Where are you going to find another one like this? This one sat still since 1978, according to the seller. Then went under an extensive frame-off restoration completed in 05. I've never seen more 427, 390, and 427, 435 Corvettes in one place at one time ever, and, and they're all for sale. I think sometimes we, we got to remind ourselves that besides the fact all this great, great stuff is for sale, it's just a fabulous car show. I mean, there's over a thousand cars. Just come look at it. Not only is it for sale, it's for sale at no reserve, meaning you can put your money down on this car. You're battling with the other bidders. You're not trying to find the reserve, the minimum that would normally be applied to a car like this at, at another auction. It's no reserve at Barrett Jackson, meaning if you can beat the other bidders on price, no matter how high or low that price might be, the car is yours. We're at $200,000. And the skybox is involved. What do you want to do? Out of the $215,000, $215,000 bids in the skybox at $210,215. Is everybody down here? We get about $215,000. Any more advances? Out of the $215,000, $215,000. Out of the $215,000, $215,000. Last and final call to $10,000, $15,000 uh, here. $20,000 and $20,000 here. Out of the $220,000. Out of the $220,000 in the skybox. Out of the $215,000, $220,000. Out of the $215,000, $220,000. $220,000, Robert. Out of the $215,000, $220,000, $220,000. We get about out of the $20,000. Out of the $215,000, $220,000. Everybody down the skybox, 215, 20. Out of a 215, Patrick's in. 215, 220. Out of a 215, 220. Out of a 220. We get 20, we get 20, we get 20, we get 20, Robert. Out of a 220. Last and final call. It'll be 20. Out of here, 20. Out of a 220. 212, 20. 212, 20. Yes or no? 212. So, $212,000. $212,000. Robert, the auctioneer is speaking to is Robert Leposky, bidder's assistant up in the skybox with the checkered flag. Let's go to Rick DeBruel. And it is time for our next Haggerty Fantasy bid car. This is lot 1269. It's a 1968 Dodge Charger RT Custom Two Door. All right, what do you do when you find a car in the original 440s long gone? Well, you turn it into a mean machine. That's exactly what's happened here. Owner says it was originally an Arizona car. Because of that, it was rust free. It was a great project to start with. From there, he has taken it and moved along. Put in a 5.7 crate Hemi. And I have to tell you, just from a purely spectator standpoint, it draws a crowd. It looks great. But remember, this isn't an original car. This is a Hemi Custom. So what do you think the bidders will go for here at Barrett-Jackson for lot 1269? And strange is not an adjective. It's an advantage. 
Go ahead and file your Haggerty Fantasy Bid at speedtv.com slash fantasy bid or text message for 50 cents at number 25852. Let us know what you think this car will be hammered away for without going over. We'll talk to you later when the car goes to the block. We will close the bids and pick our winner. What? Back live at Barrett Jackson, we've got an attack on our top five sellers. This is a 68 Shelby GT500 KR convertible. It's at 265, and I know you like these cars, Matt Stone. I do, and this is a good one. It's a big block. It's a four-speed. It's a very rare color, this yellow. Uh, so says the information we have, just one of 43 in this color. Big numbers, over a quarter of a million bucks, and still going as they push it toward the end of the block. Documentation, including the original build sheet, original Shelby VIN tag or vehicle identification number, door warranty tag, body buck tag, all the Ford serial number stampings. Well documented car, and that adds value. Matter of fact, we've got an email asking Is the Shelby GT500 more collectible than a small block GT350? I believe you're seeing your answer right up on the stage right now. I'm gonna be 285. I'm gonna be 280 and 285. I'm gonna be 285. I'm gonna be 285. I'm gonna be 285. 285. 285. I'm gonna be 285. Going once. I'm gonna be 280. 285. Going twice. I'm gonna be 280. Third and last call. 285. Sold. 280,000. Two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. If you're scoring at home, better shuffle your top five sellers because there's one of them. Number three. I, I'm going to let Mike talk about the mechanical aspects here, but let me talk to you about the emotional valence I have with this car. It says that it won the Superstock National at Cotati Raceway in '64. In '64, my buddy Bjarni Holm in his '56 Alpha Giulietta took me to Cotati, where I worked as a corner worker. That's up. It's in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't exist anymore. We'd get up at six in the morning, drive up a two-lane highway, and there'd be nothing but hay bales around to mark the track out. This car is completely original on the interior except for the floor mats. You see the way the seats are faded, the piping is slightly discolored. You look in the trunk, it's got that same kind of really cheesy pattern, trunk pattern that all the cars from that era had. So aside from the mechanical, aside from the history, this car is like a living memory bank. I've got, got to say this one thing too, I have a personal connection to this car. This right here, I wrote a story about this car oh, back in 1990. Two, I call it the aluminum soda can, 425 horsepower soda can. But uh, back in my old days at Chrysler Power Magazine, I know this car well. I love this car. It's cool. According to the seller, one of only four two-door lightweight max wedges known to exist. The car has a little over 400 miles. Well, well, 400 miles is uh, how many trips down the drag strip and back. Sure is. <laughs> Probably about 200. 120,000 dollars sends it to a new owner. That gentleman is on at least his second acquisition of the auction. Well done. A very unique car with a racing heritage. And with that, we'll close the bidding on our next Haggerty Fantasy Bid car, the 68 Dodge Charger RT Custom Two Door Hardtop. Gotten a lot of magazine publicity over the years. The 354 cubic inch engine, 360 horsepower, the five speed. All new glass, according to the seller. This is a good example of what Steve has described to us as a pro touring car. It's a muscle car, but of course, it's got a lot of updates. This is not an old Hemi. People are wondering, well, I don't remember the 5.7 liter Hemi. No, this is the new Hemi that you can get in a Chrysler 300 or a Dodge Charger. 340 horsepower is the way it comes. It's 360 horsepower in this trim. Manual trans. And uh, what kind of job have they done putting new hardware in this older car? 
Oh, well, Matt, let me say, before we talk about the hardware, a lot of people, they love the Charger name, but they're unhappy because the new Charger is four doors. They go, my goodness, that's two doors more than a Charger should have. So if you want modern mechanicals, but you want a two-door Charger, this is what you need to buy. It also heralds the new age of, uh, of the Chrysler small Hemi, you know, the, the 5, 7, and 6.1 liter crate motors. They're great engines. They have much power as any other small block crate motor in the market today, and, and they're Hemi's. As you would expect from a recently built car, it's just immaculate under the hood. There's been a ton of money spent putting this car together. The panel fit is excellent. Look at the air cleaner there. It looks nasty, doesn't it? Interesting story on this car, according to the seller. When the car was originally found, its original 440 and 727 were long gone. So they went looking for parts and pieces, accepted only the best. And this is the result. Oh, we watch the actual bidding. We had our largest number of Haggerty Fantasy bidders of the week. 4,233 of you. Thank you, each and every one. We got an internet bidder in the mix. And a phone contact, apparently. His fist is in the air. Whoops, fist is down. And someone else has bid higher. Now she asks the bidder, will he go higher? On the left of your screen in the left hand window is the internet section of the bidding podium. Fist in the air means I've got the lead bid now. I'll tell you what, Amy's had a great kill rate this week thus far. It seems like every other bidder she works with wins a car. There's Tim Astor. He now has the top bidder and the winner at $130,000. Congratulations. Thanks again to the 4,233. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Barrett Jackson. Here's a look at our constantly changing top five sellers on our Speed Channel coverage. At a quarter million dollars, we have a tie. This beautiful 67 Shelby GT500 Fastback, now formerly owned by the Red Rocker, Sammy Hagar, who generously volunteered to share the tequila in the tail with whoever the winning bidder was. Also at 250, a 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda two-door hardtop with just 1,002 actual miles. What a buy. Up to 280,000 for this 1968 bright yellow Shelby GT500 KR convertible. One of just 43 in that special paint color. At $300,000, want to go racing? This car was built for it back in 1968, but never saw the drag strip. A 68 Dodge Dart Hemi. And at twice that amount, not this exact car, but one just like it. When the first 2007 Shelby GT500 Fastback is built, it will be built to the personal specifications of a person who bid $600,000 for that right. And the total sum went to the Carol and Cleo Shelby Children's Foundation. A great, great gesture. Low mileage L88. Wow, deep breaths all around. Long way to go. Deep into the night here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Now on stage, lot 1271.1, 1969 Chevy Corvette L88 Coupe. Now we've seen a lot of the, uh, the mid-year Corvette in the 427, both the 390 horse and the 435s. This, of course, is the, the Mako Shark Stingray, bo Sting Stingray body style, the L88 Coupe also. 430 horsepower with a 427. Uh, it is said to be one of 116 L88s built that year. All sorts of NCRS documentation all over this car, certifying its originality. Very low miles. Looks like it's well done. There's a whole book with it that includes the original window sticker and a lot of other data. This is about the time these engines started to get choked by smog regulations. You can see the gulp valve here and the smog pump and the attendant plumbing, but they still put out monstrous torque. Wow, look at that bid. Well, 
Well, you can tell some folks have been waiting on this car. Yeah, rare bird here. Not, not, mem not many L88s to be found. Corvette owners and lovers are known to be some of the most tenacious bidders here at Barrett-Jackson. They know their stuff and they're ready to pay for it. You're at 240, 250. That's why there's a hundred of them in this year's catalog. It's a very well-known car, a museum car, a Bloomington Gold car, a top flight car. That's just all the right info to make the money. Fully documented with owner history from new as well as the factory documents. Just kicked its way into our top five. I'm going to borrow this book for a second, please. Thank you. Here's uh, the original window sticker and the protector plate. NCRS Top Flight, Bloomington Gold Hall of Fame. Add that all up. Big money. He could have, he could have bought it for 6748. 270 and 267. Here it is. We're asking 270. I'm going to be 270,000. I'm going to be 260,000. I'm going to be 270. I'm going to be 260,000. Fully documented. You're buying the best. Back three documents. 260,000 is with Angel. I'm going to be 260. 265, 80. I'm going to be 265. Don't lose it. I'm going to be 265. 265. 270. 265. 270. 275. 275. That gentleman in the red shirt wants it badly. 270 is Angel. I'm going to be 275. I'm going to be 280, Angel. I'm going to be 280. 275, sir. Still in? How badly? How badly? You want to go another five? Maybe another 2,500? This is world record territory for this type of car. Okay, sir. Balls in your court. A bitter's mind as he sits there and makes us all wait and drags the whole thing out. He's thinking about he's, he's gonna write a big, big check to the last uh -huh. 300,000. Is that the knockout punch? We are not done. This is record territory. Hot stuff. Okay, sir, you've come this far. 310, 315,000 angel. 310, world record. These guys I have. 310,000. Okay, sir. He's come this far too. 310, 15 going once. 310, 15. Clock's ticking now. 310, 15,000 third last call. Hammers in the air. So. So. There's the seller. Could he have dreamed that the car would bring a world record price? Dollars takes it. And out of the stage, a 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda two-door hardtop. And I want to clarify something. Earlier, we showed you some of the cars still to come today, some of the real heavy iron. One is that custom 69 Chevy Camaro SS Coupe, Baldwin Motions car. At the time, I said it was a Chip Foose design. It is not. It is pure Baldwin Motion, an award winner. I apologize for that confusion. When we see the car, we see what it brings. We are expecting big things. Meanwhile, here is a D21 four-speed complete nut and bolt restoration with less than 100 miles on it. A matching numbers, 426 Hemi, 425 horsepower Cuda two-door hardtop. This is not a clone. This is not a recreation. This is a genuine R-code, as they call it, 426, 425 horse Hemi. It's a four-speed car. 
Uh, the green and black is a very subtle combination. Looks to have some uh, nice optional equipment on it. The Dana 60 rear end, power steering, front disc brakes, shaker hood, six-way seat, a lot of the right stuff. And already near 300 grand. Now, I'd like to point out something that I've never seen before up front here. So commonly, when the hood latch comes down, it scratches the paint. Now, I've got this. There's this little piece of tape right here. My guess is that that's not original, that that was just put there to protect this paint from the hood latch coming down. Not original, but very appropriate. Galen Govier does a great job on these numbers as you see the bid rising. And that's what makes this car 18 out of 20 in Ivy Green. All the numbers are there. Matching numbers car, the real deal. Number 336 of 393 Hemis produced in 1970. It's all about the numbers. Boy, how about those numbers? $400,000. Second place in our top five sales today. That gentleman's done, but I don't think the bidding is. If a coupe is 400, what's the convertible going to bring? There it is, $410,000, $420,000. Somebody maybe thought a $10,000 ante would knock out the rest. Instead, somebody saw his 10,000 race. Somebody else saw another 10,000 in it. Love it when the folks around the bidder start getting behind them. Come on. Spin, spin, spin. It's not their money. But this gentleman's not out with Amy. I thought he was done. Bob, um, that's invest, 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 not spend, spend, spend. Please. Check. Sorry. I stand corrected. Sell it, sell it, sell it. No, you've got to raise. No, we're well over. We're well over a thousand dollars per cubic inch here. That's a new new measurement. That's a way to look at it. Well, people are on their feet. The crowd has gotten into the bidding. This is great stuff. Four hundred and seventy-five thousand. Four fifty. Four seventy-five. Get him in. Get him in. Get him in. I'm a four fifty. I'm gonna get seventy-five. All in. All in. I'm done. If you're done, I'm gonna put in seventy-five. Four fifty. Seventy-five. And. $450,000. Keith, we're seeing something new here. A Z28, a Shelby, and two right, Hemis yeah. all went across Hemi in folks. dark green for big money. Now, except fun. for British cars, green Time has not fared Mustang well at this auction until this year. What's happened? Well, to my mind, it's just the bullet effect because I'm my life is hopelessly wrapped up around the color. The Eyeballing the cars now up there. A 1968 Ford Mustang 428 CJ Fastback. These cars were very fast in their day. You might uh, think them analogous to uh, to Boss 302s and, and uh, those kind of cars. They were not quite a Shelby, but, uh, but very fast, very popular. And already, look, blink yeah. of an eye, $250,000. It's a well-documented 428CJ. This is our tomato car, I believe, that Rick DeBrule introduced to us earlier. A quick note, when they put this chassis together, I don't think they had putting the stuff on the 428 motor in here in mind. If you look in the back here, my understanding, Mike, is that changing this back spark plug here can be uh, almost an engine out operation. It's hard on these. It's impossible on the Boss 429s. Most owners cut a hole in the footwell to get to that back spark plug. But so what? The way it went down the road, uh, they call this a Hemi Hunter, and it's also been called the fastest pure stock in history by Hot Rod Magazine. And look at the number, $400,000. Holy mackerel. We're reinventing the top five as we go. For non-Shelby, non-Boss, this is huge money. 
New gauges, otherwise looks pretty original, and it just went half the ton. Wow! The gentleman who was in on that Hemi Cuda two-door hardtop for 450. 500, 500. Your audience, sir, don't worry, we didn't get you for that. 475. This is Ford's year as a, first year as a sponsor of the Barry Jackson auction. I'd say they picked a pretty good time to put their name on this event. Stable lead to Barrett Jackson's world record. You can't tell it from that picture, but be behind that television camera, there are a bunch of folks gathered in the aisle, standing up, turning around to look at the bidder. Talk about pressure. That gentleman in the flowered shirt thinking it over. Scooter away. On the 500,000. 500,000. All in. Hold on, 475 Yeah, he got it. This car might have been the Ford equivalent of the Yanko Chevys or the Baldwin Motion Machines. Folger Ford in Los Angeles, supposedly the only dealership to offer this combination. A very rare car and very big money. Woo! Deep breath and now rolling to center stage. Lot 1275, a 67 Chevy Corvette 427 400 convertible. L68 V8, Muncie four speed, another numbers matching vet. They just come at you in waves. Great powertrain here. It's the 427 Tri Power with a four speed. Nice color combination red over black. Let's see where she starts. Now 200. How many 100,000 been here? Now two. 200,000. Know, the base price of this car was $4,230, including a destination charge. And fully optioned like this, it was $6,152. That was just about 40 years ago. Let's see what kind of return on investment an owner would have if they'd bought this car then and held on to it all these years. 20. But remember at the beginning of our program, we were also blown away by that $300,000 the 68 yellow Dodge Dart Hemi went for. That car is on the bubble in our top five sellers right now. Only, only $300,000? That was a piker that bought that car. I, I like what they're doing here. They came in with the hard top, they took it off, now they're, they took, brought the soft top out and showed it, put it back down. So they're they're visually showing everybody that the car has both of its tops. And they want you to know what it was like in the day. They brought a bunch of contemporary Corvette ads from the 60s. This one says, good secondhand car. The secondhand is on the stopwatch. <laughs> Clever. Now, this car is not perfect. It's got some uh, marks here from where the hard top has been fitted. A few little water stains would probably, probably buff out. But it's a beautiful car in a rare color combination. But, but not what I would call a, an absolutely staggeringly perfect car. You can see down here in the, in the engine bay, you've got some, some marks on this. This isn't all detailed. So it's nice, but it's been driven. Exactly, and that's what I like about it. It is a car to be used, not a garage queen. And they're, they're very honest about it. This car ran in the Copper State 1000, and it's been refreshed since. Hammered away for $205,000. Not a top five car, but what the heck? That's just a number. Craig Jackson and his mother, Nellie Jackson, widow of event co-founder Russ Jackson. He and Tom Barrett, who began this event as a car show with a Southwestern theme and the name La Fiesta de los Autos Elegantes. Now it is the world's largest and greatest collector car auction. Now on the block, a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda custom convertible six-shooter. 
I like the engineering of this one, Bob, compared to the one we saw yesterday in that the entire Dodge Viper V10 engine is set back behind the center line of the front wheels. They had to move the firewall and extend the dash to do it, but this car should handle much better than the one we saw yesterday. And one thing that's kind of cool, this is actually more than just an engine swap. There's actually an, an, an independent Viper rear suspension, a Viper six-speed manual transmission, and this is basically a Viper hiding under the skin of a 70 Barracuda ragtop. Mike, as if a, a Viper V10 is not powerful enough, what's that little aluminum thing we sit and just we see sitting just in front of the engine? Well, my ex-crew chief, Matt, called that a hair dryer. <laughs> um, no, actually, it's, it's not a turbocharger. It is a belt-driven supercharger. There's an intercooler, your air intake, but it looks like the uh, charged air has a long way to go to get to the intake plenums. Nonetheless, more power, more money. Horsepower rated at about 650. So is the torque. This car heralds in yet another of the new wave of, of Mopar pro touring type cars. The Mopar contingent was a little bit slow to catch on. I have to say that Ford and Chevy guys were doing tasteful pro touring cars for about five, six, seven years. But last two or three years, we've seen some really delicious Mopars, and this is one of them. And 35, 45, 135 out of 45. Out of 35, maybe to get 45 out of the fire. Out of 135, maybe to get the bottom, maybe to get the bottom of 45. I'm at 135 here, 45. Out of 55, 55, 55, 55, 55. And 145, 55, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 55, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, out of 165, you say 175, 157, 160, 157, 60, 165, 165, I'm at 60 here, we get five, 160, we get five, we get about it, we get about it, 160, now five, and 160, down to 65, 60, here's 70,000, and 170,000, and 170,000, got you, Doug, out of 170,000, not it, out of a 25, we get 70, I would Doug at 60,570, and 160,570,000, out of 160,000, we get about 170,000, not it, the Doug's in at 160,570, I have Doug at 160,000, I think people are recognizing this is more than just an engine swap. Yep. Phone bitter involved. Steve Davis with the light shirt. Bottom of your screen. You may not be able to see this from where you're at, but uh, the interior of this car is sort of like a little tub that cradles the driver. It's a complete redesign for stock. I don't think so. They had to shoehorn that engine in there. This thing is a real tire stretcher. 75, 75, is everybody done? First time, 175, thanks for all you did do. And second time in 175 and a half. So $170,000, so $170,000. It goes for $170,000. With the variation there on that hockey. Our announcers, I hope you understand that we are deliberately being quiet so that you can hear the auctioneers and watch the drama of the bidders. We'll move on to lot. 1281, a 2005 Ford Mustang FR500C race car. Another car eligible for the Grand Am Cup Series. Now, this is the second one of these we have seen here today. Let us remind you, this is not a street legal car. However, it is sold by the factory as a turnkey race car, of course, built on the new Mustang platform. As Bob said, they did really, really well last year in Grand Am Cup. Uh, we don't know how many of these are being built or what the demand for them is, but perhaps some of the interest in buying one here at auction is just so you can get one in time to go down and run in Daytona here next weekend. Let's see how it does. The last one sold at, uh, at well more than the $125,000 catalog price for an FRC 500. And the other one went for $187,000. That had the added provenance, if you will, of being a Barrett-Jackson special. Mike Joy, 
every once in a while we get a chance to ask the expert if it was a Shelby to be Carol Shelby it's a brand new Ford Mustang race car Dan Davis the head of Ford Racing tell us a little about this well this car is a purpose-built race car we built uh, so far about 15 of them this was in the, uh, the Daytona three-hour race at the beginning of the year this car won the championship we won the drivers manufacturers and everything so it's a piece of history is it true that I can go to the catalog I can order one of these ready to race you can order one of these it comes just like this brand new ready to go Wow. And whereas the other one was a brand new car right off the assembly line, this one obviously has a racing history. One thing that's kind of fascinating about these cars, well, about this side, I guess, the doors on this thing are paper thin. They're gutted. There's no windows, no nothing. I love this. Factory race cars don't get any more serious than this thing right here. Hey, Steve, is that a radio delete car? I think it is. <laughs> I think Motor Trend needs to road test one of these, and I think I need to do it. I think you guys need the year-long test on this one. You, you tell Dan Davis we need a, we need a test card at the Motor Trend offices next week, please. Actually, you'll pick it up here and drive it back, won't you? <laughs> Forget, you'll see that Daytona Grand Am race on speed. All a part of the Rolex 24 weekend. Don't leave Arizona without this automobile. Those big old camera motors are beautiful in these things. They're about as wide as a street Hemi. Great engines. I'm racking my brain trying to remember who drove the 55. It may have been the Canadian pairing of Scott Graham and David Empringham. Scott Maxwell, excuse me, and David Empringham. We have confirmation of that. Well, this one's still kicking off bids. <laughs> Saw the Hoosier tires on the car. Those are correct. That's the spec tire for the series. <laughs> This one may have raced as recently as last fall. The ring man was asking for 182. The bidder said, let's go to 184. We're right in the ballpark with that previous unraced version. Well, whoever is bidding against is just saying, okay, fine. <laughs> Well, that's only appropriate, I guess, right on the button. A match for the other Ford Mustang FR 500C race car. Let's go to Rick DeBrule. Well, this is what our next Haggerty Fantasy bid car looked like 35 years ago. And this is what it looks like now. This is lot number 1287. Officially, it's a 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle LS6 convertible, but this car has a lot of history going for it. Back in the early 70s, 70 and 71, Ray Allen drove this car in NHRA competition and won just about every race he entered in. This car has been restored to driving condition now, and now it is our next fantasy bid car. So think about this, an LS6, which has a lot of value to start with a convertible and with the racing history attached to it. What do you think this will go for? So, what are we bid? File your hand Haggerty Fantasy Bid at speedtv.com slash fantasy bid or text message us for a 50 cent cell phone call at two. Welcome back, sun growing low in the Valley of the Sun. Let's take a look at our top five sellers as we wrap up the first five hours of our speed broadcast. For $350,000, lucky bidder picked up a 1957 Chrysler Imperial convertible with a long Hollywood provenance, including its original owner, Howard Hughes. Also at $350,000, a one-of-a-kind 1953 Ford Vega Roadster Gardner Special car his inspiration came from many of the top designers of the era. In third place at a tidy $450,000, a 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda two-door hardtop in that color green that has drawn so many big sales prices thus far at Barrett-Jackson. $25,000 above that, four seventy-five. dollars if you're keeping track, a 1965 Ford Mustang 428 CJ Fastback, reputed to be the fastest pure stock car in history. 
and topping them all at $600,000, an amount which will go as a donation to the Carol and Cleo Shelby Children's Foundation, the rights to spec out your own 2007 Shelby GT500 Fastback. That was quite a moment. Here's a look at the numbers. 25 cars have now sold at $200,000 or higher. Down shortly, a 1957 Chevy Corvette convertible. The bidding is at $215,000 and percolating. Steve. Guys, it's a really special car. It's a 57 Fuley Airbox. You might say, what's that? Well, it's a cold air kit, 8,000 RPM tachometer. But most importantly, if you look at the engine, you'll see the generators on the driver's side instead of the passenger side. That was done only on these cars, and it puts the belt under tension so it doesn't fly off at high RPMs. It's a specific trade of the 570E Airbox 57 Fuley car. Very rare. One of 43, and this supposedly the only one that also got a convertible top. Most owners deleted it on the order sheet because they were going racing with these cars, not the road. And speaking of deletes, what kind of radio does this car have, Mike? <laughs> Sold at 225, radio delete means that very valuable plate is where the radio should have been. And it is autographed, by the way, by Zora Arcus Duntoff. The father of... Get it. <laughs> Let's go back to the stage. Another Corvette, another powerful one, a 427, 435 horse, 1967 convertible. Steve, can you take us on a quick trip through the horsepower rating for 427s? Because I was on the block, I saw 390, and then I thought I saw 425, and then I saw, thought I saw 435. Can you quickly explain the different options in the years? Well, yeah, generally speaking, the uh, 427 was available in a fairly tame state of tune with a hydraulic cam and overport heads, generally 390 to 400 horsepower. But when you put these square port heads, which have bigger valves, you get into the 425 and the 435 horsepower modes. The 435 denotes the tri-power, but there was also a 400 horsepower tri-power, so it's kind of confusing from year to year between 67, 66, 68, and 69, but there's a whole bunch of them. The important thing about the 435 is the horsepower rating that GM gave it, or Chevy gave it, to stay within the GM constraints is about 100 to 150 horsepower shy of what that engine actually produced at a higher RPM, but they wanted people to be able to insure these cars, and they wanted to get through this engine past the GM brass and entered production. They say 435, I say 550 and up. This, this 67 is the last year for the Sting Ray until 69. Well, actually, the Sting Ray became a one word thing. 68, Corvette did not use the term Sting Ray, but 67, final year for Sting Ray, two words. Look at that number $300,000 car is NCRS certified, received the top flight in Cincinnati at a regional NCRS meet. Certification ribbon and judging sheets included. There's Once Dave again, Ressler. This is why you come to Barrett Jackson, to find the best. Dave Ressler brings Corvettes, usually has a jacket to match. Looks like maybe he had to go to some upholstery maker to get one in the right color for this car. We're, we're not talking $5,000 bids here either, guys. We've just jumped in $25,000 increments in just the last few seconds. Not clear if Dave is the seller or the buyer. There's the gentleman who bought the Howard Hughes car. Yeah, he's done with his yogurt now, and he's ready to buy another car. That's right. He's ready for business now. He's getting serious. And he just did for $350,000. That, that's a big number for those mid-year 435 horse cars. Dave adds to his... Corvette collection at 350 the hobby. And you might want to look up our next couple of lots because these are very, very special cars. We will start with a 1963 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL convertible. Well, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience to watch these cars sell. There's going to be a convertible first and a 300 SL going second, both sold by the same person, the original owner. I have never in all my years of going to auction seen anything like this. This car has got 35,000 original miles and has been fully restored by Mercedes in Toronto in 2004. It's a pristine car. It's, it's, it's a great car to own, but it's real. The real question here is, will one person want to buy both these cars 
to keep him together as kind of a match set. I was speaking with the owner's daughter, and again, we're talking the original owner. He's now 82 years old. He's just about done driving. He wants these cars to go on to new owners, and she says she hopes, even though they are not being sold as a pair, she really hopes that they are bought as a pair. And, and of course, we won't know until the end of the sale of the next car. 275 already for the Roadster. And no shortage of bidders, it looks like. Good money and a lot of interest from the crowd. Let's watch. 290, 290, you know, 2, 275, 300, I can see that without too much trouble if it's, if it's truly a you know, top flight Concours restoration. That's kind of the normal money that those cars are bringing these days. Anything above that, we start getting into the one of a pair. Keith, the cars had body work, especially in the nose. There's evidence of sanding and painting, and not just a sympathetic repaint. But I'm gonna forgive that as this car is presented as a survivor. There it goes. Okay. Three hundred thousand. Now that's so we've got we've got half of the benchmark set now. Yep. Now we're going to find out will the same bidder, if we can see who bought that car, keep an eye on them, and are they going to go after the second car, and are they going to be willing to pay whatever it takes to keep the two together? The Gullwing Wing is a little older, 1957. Uh, basically the same car. Is our, uh, there's the winner of the first bid. Basically the same car, a little different at the front end. Of course, obviously the difference in the top, but uh, sister cars in every sense of the term. It's a great, great offering here at Bear Jackson. History absolutely in the making. Hey, Matt, there are uh, the differences, the real differences in the rear suspension because they went, uh, they modified the rear suspension dramatically on the Roadster, and it makes that car much more pleasant to drive. And the and the the car probably had an aluminum block and had front disc brakes and all those things. No, good, good, good point, Keith. I forgot about the rear suspension. Thank you. But the Gullwing is the more iconic of the two cars, even though the Roadster is the better driver. The finish on this one is similar. The leading edge of the hood shows uh, a little bit of road wear, and there's some touch-ups here and there. There's an emblem missing, and there's a little dent here. So it's the story that's going to sell this car, not the condition so much. Right, like the previous one, unrestored. You know, if it were my car, I would have I would have put that emblem back on. I would have had Mr. Dentless removal, Mr. Magic, come out and take the little dent out, because why have something so apparent as a flaw visible? Well, you know, I sense that the seller, that 82-year-old gentleman from Toronto, is not, how shall I say this? I don't think he cares. You know, he, he, he bought the car, he loved it, he drove it, and now he's going to pass it on. It's, it's not an investment for him. And I would have to say, Bob, I don't believe the buyers care either. This is, this is not about, you know, those last few points of Concours restoration. This is originality, provenance, uh, low miles, preservation, great stuff. And, of course, the two is a pair. Now, let's see who buys car number two. Yuck. You see an original <laughs> engine bay. Get the inline six. It's a, a beautiful tuned intake manifold right there. That's ram tuning and sonic tuning right there. Lots of science in that intake manifold. Like you said, Keith, an iconic car, an opportunity for somebody to take this thing and make it special. It'll take some investment, but it's all there and all original. Obviously bringing more than the convertible. I'm going to be 340. I'm going to be 340. I'm going to be 340 going once. I'm going to be 330. 335. Now 349. Now 340. I'm going to be 335. Don Williams, the Blackhawk Collection, and Mark Hyman from Hyman Classic Cars Limited there. Both very active in this uh, collector car community. I wonder if my old friend and colleague Sam Posey is looking in. He's got a 300 SL Gullwing with some provenance that includes the maestro, Juan Manuel Fangio. $345,000, so the pair, it appears, will be split. Away goes that iconic Mercedes-Benz B. That, that 
Now we'll go back to the block for lot number 1287, a 1970 Chevy Chevelle LS6 convertible. And with that, we close the bidding on our 1970 Chevelle LS6 and our Haggerty Fantasy Bid contest. We'll have the numbers for you shortly. Appreciate your participation. Good luck. 61 miles on the Odo on this car. You know, Mike, this this car is a, a little interesting and a contradiction in terms. It says here that it's the car that Ray Allen drove and won just about every conceivable race entered in 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 1970. Yet it looks like it's restored to street condition with decals on it. This car it. in 1970 won the NHRA Superstock World Championship. Uh, this car ran as fast as a half a second under the national record and was never defeated. It won the NHRA World Finals in Dallas, Texas, which uh, many of the Chrysler fans out there said it was a fluke. And three weeks later, duplicated the feat at the first televised drag race at Ontario Motor Speedway and beat every one of them again. Uh, this car is one of a kind. It's, uh, as you all know, how rare LS6 convertibles are. This is, without a doubt, the most famous one there is. Uh, again, it was never defeated, and uh, see what happens. Quite a statement. Never defeated. I sold yeah, a few guys, years ago an LS6 truly convertible. This is significant if you're a drag racing thing. history fanatic, as most baby boomers are. But if you read Superstock, Hot Rod, Carcraft, any time in 1970 or 71, you saw this car in its pages as a winner. Ray Allen not only raced this car, but he supervised the restoration. And the car is sold on its one and only original let's New go. Jersey title. So one owner, great racing history. Mike, how's the interior of the car? Is it a stripped out race car? And what's somebody really buying here if they buy this car? They're buying a car with roll up windows, uh, with bucket seats, but with no console. Uh, so I would call it a lightly optioned car, but you know, it's a convertible, it's an LS6 with a great history. <laughs> 300, gone. Zero to 300 in about 4.7 seconds. And no radio. One of those valuable radio delete plates. 4,527 of you filed Haggerty Fantasy bids. That's our biggest total yet. Thank you very much. Yeah, this car is it's in fully restored condition with the lettering added, but it, it's beautifully done. Doesn't surprise me much here. A 70 Chevelle LS6 convertible, the 454, is already a pretty prized muscle car. When you add well-documented provenance and racing history like this, for somebody, uh, as Steve said, who is really into uh, NHRA history, you've got a magic combination and $325,000 so far. Now, the lettering on this car was probably painted on originally. It is now done in vinyl. Given the car's history, I'd say that's forgivable because it gives the new owner the option to leave it on or take it off without doing any damage. You know, this car was such a killer in Superstock E-Automatic that Chrysler actually built a special Hemi Superbird to take it out. Well, the two cars never got to line up because Ray Alley was out of the competition before the Superbird could get to line with it. The Superbird was an all wheel wheelbase car, and Chrysler went that far to try and take this car out. They never did meet up, though. Up to number eight on our top sellers of the day and the auction. Oh, yeah, and Jack Worst was the guy who was supposed to drive that Hemibird to victory over this car. Again, it never happened. A real piece of history. They're at 350. Moving up into a tie for fourth place among the top sellers. 375. Sole possession of fourth. Am I hearing $25,000 increments up to four? I thought I heard 425 rattling around out there. There it is. 
450 tied for third 475 tied for second a skybox bitter well now we're getting to where we need to be but you know this car looks too nice to have been raced what a restoration well, that's what I'm wondering what do you do with it is it a museum piece or do you drive this baby five hundred thousand dollars our second highest seller And that gentleman's becoming a regular personality here among the bidders. We're at 550 and climbing. $25,000 increments. Five seventy five six hundred. Five seventy five six hundred going once. I'm gonna Bob, you're out up top. What's your chance to own? Five seventy five is best. Six hundred thousand. Six twenty five. Got it. Six twenty five. Six twenty you say it? Six twenty five. Six hundred and six twenty five. I'm gonna be singing a quarter, six and a half. I'm gonna be six twenty five fifty. I'm gonna be six hundred and twenty five thousand. Six hundred and fifty thousand. You know the other half of this equation, the former Jack Burst Hemi Superbird is still out there. These two cars might meet again on the auction block. We'll see. New top seller. Oh, he's jumping to seven, it looks like. 